So hello and welcome everybody to our today's webinar, Data Exchange with Argus and Symphony, Supplier Portals in the Automotive Industry. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Um, and I will want to welcome you for today's webinar. Um, my name is Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Argosense. And next to me, I have Christian Middle, who is responsible for our product development. And he will later in this meeting take the role of uh, presenting you an online or live demo um, of our system, how we can exchange data between um, a supplier portal and a change management system. Um, for today, we have uh, we have prepared different uh, different points on our agenda. First, we want to talk a little bit about uh, ArgoSense. After that, I will present you the ArgoSense solutions and especially, of course, ArgoSense Symphony. And then we'll have a few slides uh, regarding data exchange uh, and, in fact, uh, the, the type of error management in the automotive industry, so more from a theoretical standpoint. And after that, uh, Kristen will take over and uh, show you in a live demo how we can uh, integrate with the BMW TIAC portal and import uh, tickets from there into an Atlassian Jira installation. A few words about ArgoSense. Um, we are here located uh, in a city called Kornwestheim, close to Stuttgart, and have founded a company in 2009. And from the beginning, we have specialized in uh, tool integration and data exchange. So this is our, uh, I would say, our major competence we have. But we have detected we should not operate on a single product strategy. So uh, what we found that there are a lot of requirements management tools in the market, but all of them they have uh, they have missing functionalities uh, on different uh, different aspects on different ends. So that was the reason for us to say, okay, we want to create um, a solution covering uh, all these gaps. And uh, I think we have we have come up with a very sophisticated solution now for requirements management and also for traceability. Um, of course, um, due to our 10 years history and be also before that, of course, um, we have a strong expertise with all the leading ALM tools. Basically, that's our, our business integrating all these tools, but it's not only necessary to know our own software it's also very important to know the strengths and weaknesses and uh, about the tools we are integrating with and uh, this is, has been proven really to be very very helpful uh, in the past and of course will do in the future um, our complete product development is based here in, in germany um, we are operating completely out of our headquarters here in Convestheim with all our um, different departments like uh, sales, marketing, uh, support, um, and so on and so on. So and where we are really focusing on is that we have uh, aligned our product management along with uh, the requests from the market and our customers. So maybe we, of course, we sometimes we have good own ideas, uh, which we would like to see in the product, but I would say 80% of the new functionality is really driven by our customers and by, by the market, where we think that is a, a very good relation and um, um, a proportion um, in, in bringing in new functionality. Um, so our customers can be sure that we are really listening to them and, and bring the, the features into the product in time. So you usually do not have to wait for months and or years, uh, so we are operating quite quite fast. Um, of course, our most important and biggest assets are our, is our customer base, and um, here are just a few of them. So you'll see, especially for for the topic of today with the automotive um, um, market, we have a lot of I would say 60% customers in the automotive industry. A lot of first tier suppliers of course also uh, um, some of the of the biggest of the german uh, oems here in our customer base and if there is a need for any one of you to talk to one of our customers to get a first-hand information regarding our performance and our product performance don't hesitate to contact us and uh, request um, for a contact in one of in one of the in, uh, customer companies we are operating with 
So let's go over to the Augustin solutions. I already introduced uh, them with the names Augustin Symphony. As I said, this is has two two use main use cases. It's one is the ALM tool integration itself or internal tool integration, and the second one is that we can use it for automated B2B data exchange, and especially um, with a specialized solution here for for automotive defect exchange. And the second tool, as I said, is called Argosense Fidelia. This is a requirements management system which has strong capabilities in, in, in change control um, and uh, also has a lot of functionality in terms of traceability. So we can also show and, and display information from other tools where data is related with requirements or with test cases um, or with models or whatever. So this, this is, uh, say, the main main focus for that product here. But we will talk only about Argosense Symphony today. So um, as I said, two aspects. Uh, let's start with the first one, tool integration, just that you get an idea about it. Um, we, can, we can connect all the different tools which are behind these different disciplines like requirements management, change defect management, modeling, and so on and so on. So all the tools which are behind these dis disciplines we are connecting to our platform and uh, give them the ability to speak with each other. Um, so that's, that means for our customers, uh, which are very often focusing on a kind of best of breed strategy that they, they can really um, bring these different tools together into a complete process change, a chain across all their different uh, disciplines they are, they are working. And one important thing, of course, is that integration is not only, let's say, attribute mapping. There is also a lot of uh, process involved, of course, and workflow. And this is one of the biggest strengths of our, of our platform, that we can uh, really completely customize uh, the system to the individual needs of our customers. But we have, uh, through our uh, long years experience now, uh, a lot of templates created, which um, makes it very easy to get a quick start. So the second aspect, that's what we are focusing on today, is uh, data exchange between external partners. So basically the platform is the same, but we are here more concentrating on uh, exchanging very often um, direct files like uh, XML based files or customers um, have to have to connect to um, some kind of data data portals um, they um, where they have the need to exchange the data from there or maybe it's an, an rest interface they have to connect to so there are different ways uh, how to get uh, an exchange up and running. So what we uh, always try to uh, to achieve is that uh, these data exchanges are really completely automated. So that means you as a customer of, of, of ArgoSense are working in your change management system like PDC Integrity or Jira or whatever. And uh, the data that needs to be exchanged is based on, on rules and workflows and dependencies um, will completely exchanged automatically with your with your business partner. So this is what we are always trying to accomplish here. <clears throat> and uh, with the already mentioned uh, synchronization templates, uh, we can start off with uh, an implementation in uh, in the mean. In, in, um, currently, I think we we have um, we have improved the system to a way that we are able to uh, to implement the system in, in less than than two or three days um, for new, completely new installation. And uh, subsequent projects are implemented even more uh, faster. So in, it's just a matter of, of hours uh, usually. But you will see that in the, uh, in the demonstration from Christian. So very important is that we are uh, supporting a lot of these standard formats like ASM, for example. And we are directly connecting to these different uh, proprietary uh, um, portals from BMW, Daimler, Volkswagen, Porsche, and so on. Some of the OEMs, like for example Ford, uh, they have an open system with Jira interface, for example. And this, of course, is also possible that we have a direct connection to a to a Jira system or any other system which is uh, open available, so to say. 
So let's go into the use case for, for the data exchange in, uh, in the automotive world. And uh, what we usually see is um, that, of course, development cycles decrease more and more. So uh, it's, it's the, the development cycles are faster. You have to react faster. At the same time, you have to uh, ensure that quality and security requirements are still met, even that you have less time. Um, the integration between OEMs and suppliers is getting uh, deeper and deeper. So we have, since I would say the last five years, we have so many projects uh, for, for data exchange um, that shows us directly that, that um, there is more and more need to uh, automatically exchange data between the parties. Usually, um, if uh, what we see is that uh, starting off completely new between two parties we we see large coordination efforts uh, which are caused usually by by a lot of handwork um, which could be resolved by a system like symphony and of course what is very important is the communication should be really in time um, regarding error reports and and uh, fixing of errors and um, last but not least um, suppliers are let's say the OEMs usually provide uh, their supplier portals uh, to their suppliers. So that means uh, suppliers, they have to care about how they can access uh, the system from the OEM, how they can manage uh, the data formats they are getting and they should deliver and stuff like that. So, and this is all complexity that we are taking over with, uh, with the Symfony platform. So that means usually the OEM determines the technical access, like I just said before, for example, in the Daimler it's called the Dante portal or BMW it's called Panama or the latest one is called TIAC. Uh, Porsche has a system called PFIF. Uh, Volkswagen has KPM, um, older version and the newer version and so on and so on. And on the other hand side, they are usually determining also the processes or let's say the workflow and how the data and for, on, on which rules the data should be should be synchronized. So we can see here as an example, uh, we have we have two workflows. So one is on, on, on uh, the top of that picture is your individual workflow. Um, this is just an example here, but it's from a real life project. So you, as a supplier, uh, you have a certain workflow defined in your tool in Jira, in Integrity, whatever, and you have to align that workflow um, with different exit, exit points, so to say, where you want to or where you need to uh, exchange data with the workflow of the of the OEM. And this is something um, that can be easily done in, in Symfony, but this is not only one workflow. So what you see here in the in the right um, bottom here, it's uh, an example for, for a new defect, workflow for a new def defect, but we have a lot of other business cases like maybe there's a duplicate um, or the supplier creates a defect and um, and reports that to the OEM. So there are a lot of business scenarios possible and um, we can achieve all them or we can we can cover them all without any coding. We will see later. So from a little bit more technical perspective, we have the supplier on the left-hand side, OEM on the right-hand side. Usually the OEM places an order um, to the supplier if they are if they have agreed on a certain uh, car project. So these control units ju should just uh, show um, one of the projects here. Then the supplier, usually they start developing um, and they start, of course, testing. They have their own defect management. And if uh, when the when the system has a uh, um, a certain degree uh, of development reach, then usually they hand it over to, to the OEM so that the OEM can do his integration tests or his, uh, his functional testing. Of course, they have their own change or defect management system. Now, all the things they detect, they of course want to uh, want to uh, bring this information this information back to to the supplier. And usually, as I said before, they have kind of a portal solution or maybe sometimes only a simple SFTP server or whatever, where they place either the data based on an 
certain XML format, or maybe you can retrieve that information based on a, on the REST API. Sometimes they uh, also offer maybe a web interface where you can manually look at the, the issues they have found. Um, but anyway, um, it would be good if you could transport these items or these errors or, and uh, or files directly into your system. So this is, I would say, would be the ideal way. So what are the typical requirements um, our customers uh, come to us with? So one is, of course, workflow and data synchronization um, has to be coordinated um, regarding the given processes by the OEM and, of course, aligned with the internal workflows of their own tool. Then we have to adapt to the, to the processes of the OEM and we have of course, not only one project, usually we have different projects with one and the same customer, but maybe we have maybe we have different configurations, different attribute mappings, different processes, so to say. So the solution should also be very, very flexible in terms of configuration, not only suited for a single project or a single customer even. And from the technical perspective, um, you need to adapt to the specific portal and the specific formats you are given and, and the API. And of course, um, the, auto, the data exchange usually should be automated completely without any manual work so that each party can really work in their own change management system, does not have to look into, a, into another change management system, doesn't have to do any copies by hand from one system into the other system uh, so that you really can can handle these uh, defects which are coming from your partner through your own uh, life cycle in your, in your tool. And of course, um, it would be very beneficial if you could uh, make a complete reuse of the technology so that if you have implemented a data exchange with a customer um, for one project that you can really use more or less all the stuff you have already done uh, for the second and third and the fourth project with just a little bit change in configuration. So that would be an ideal world. So in, with, uh, with a system like Symfony, for example, you can then be completely independent from your internal tracking or change management tool. So very often uh, our customers, they, they extend or they, they change uh, their, their system. Maybe they go from integrity to Jira or to, or to, to what else. Um, and that should be also possible that you can really react quite flexible on that end so that you can really also change your, your tool internally without any large interruptions here and our data loss. And of course, the system should be reliable, especially in terms of uh, data volume or also the, the exchange intervals. So there should also be means and features which have control over that perspective. So what are the alternatives um, which are used in, the, in, in, in these scenarios very often? So as I said, uh, OEMs are providing also web interfaces, web access to, to, to the um, reported issues. Um, which is usually then uh, resulting in a lot of copy and paste uh, work. And you have to uh, manage the data on, on both sides, which is very error prone, of course. Or you have maybe some of our customers, they just came to us uh, from, from a system they have self uh, programmed by themselves or, or from, a, from a consulting company, which usually has a high degree of maintenance uh, after the first introduction of the system. And uh, one of the solutions could be, and uh, we believe it's probably the best choice, a uh, system like Argus and Symphony, where everything can be automated, can be flexible, adjusted, and is extensible also in terms of uh, uh, clustering or load balancing, for example, or failover. And of course, also in terms of uh, new projects, new customer integrations and stuff like that. And with our system of uh, Without, without template-based systems, um, as I said, it's really, really um, quickly introduced and uh, implemented um, to get uh, data exchange up and running. So let's um, have a quick look into, uh, let's say, the, the architecture of Symphony before I hand over to Christian. So our systems 
based on a kind of a bus system. So you see the different different um, adapters here, um, which are connecting our Symphony core system to the different tools or to the OEM portals, and the adapters. The adapter technology is also used to translate data into different uh, formats that we would use, for example, ASM files or read ASM files. And we are always um, connecting to the tools API. Uh, so that means you do not have to care anymore if you formally develop stuff like that by yourselves about any uh, tool specific API, like you don't have to care about the syntax or data formats or whatever you, you get from from the system, that's all more or less covered by the system and normalized into our in, into our platform. And here within, we are working with so-called process templates where we took all our experience from the last 10 years and brought them into, let's say, a kind of an implementation that is really, really um, quick and short and uh, quite effortless here uh, for you. So the another advantage you have, of course, is also that, that you are completely independent from the tool versions and the software vendors. So if, for example, you are using Jira and there's a new version of Jira coming out and that last end may have made some adjustments to the API, it's our task uh, to, to uh, update our, the adapter and you can, you can um, update then your system with a new version of the adapter in a running system, so it's hot deployable. So you don't even have to care about if there are updates coming from, from the third parties here. Or for example, what we have seen Volkswagen even change their, their for data format for, uh, for KPM. So this is something we are taking care of and uh, you can make use of it at any time. And uh, option to really configure the system in, in many aspects uh, what we will see later um, this makes it um, this makes it really easy for you um, as I said to to set up new projects uh, for existing customers on setting up exchange scenarios with new customers so this is also one integral part of, of the system here and if uh, you may have some software systems, maybe you have self-developed databases or whatever, or systems which are not that common in the market, you can also use our adapter framework um, to develop own adapters um, and use the same technology to integrate all the different tools or to exchange data. Um, so this is very open technology and we are giving all the help and uh, options uh, in our customers' hands, of course, uh, so that they uh, as much as possible self-sufficient here. So I will, I think I will jump over that slide and then see, so what can we achieve here in that scenario where we stopped before uh, using Symfony with uh, what we have learned so far. So now if the supplier uses Symfony, uh, he can use the special portal adapter to retrieve the maybe XML or CSV files or to connect to the to a REST uh, API in the portal and translate and transport the data back into your internal network and uh, with the specific tool adapter, maybe for Jira or for integrity, bring that data directly into your own tool and use your own workflow to work on these, um, on these reports you've got. And of course, this has a certain complexity, and I talked about it several times now. So that's not only that you have, it's not only the case having one customer, of course, you have several customers, different OEMs you are working for. And you are not only working on one car project with one client usually, so you have multiple car projects. And uh, that picture simply should show that we really can cover very easily all this complexity uh, with, with Argos and Symfony. And there's another level of complexity, of course, maybe you have some sub suppliers you want to integrate in your system, maybe you are working together with another supplier for a car project, and um, they do not do not necessarily have such kind of a, a portal solution, you can also integrate these into your, in, into your environment. So what are the advantages? I'm going quickly over that. So we can really guarantee that uh, we have a consistent data storage on customer side and supplier side. 
So we are really taking care, of course, of these uh, data exchanges and um, and guarantee that the data is transported correctly in both directions. You will have uh, the actual and most recent information always available at any time on both sides, and I think that speeds up communication uh, significantly. You will have definitely less coordination efforts with your customers. Maybe there's a little bit uh, effort uh, at the beginning of, uh, of, of when you establish uh, an, an exchange, but I think after that, you can simply talk over your own tools, so to say. So you do, I think the number of calls and emails is significantly reduced um, using Symfony. Your developers will be happy. They have no additional tool they have to, to use, maybe uh, the web interface from the OEM, or they don't have to do any, any additional manual work like copy and paste um, anymore. They can concentrate on, on, on their uh, tasks. And definitely you will reach a higher quality of um, information and data um, as everything is uh, transported automatically. And uh, let's say the sources of potential errors are reduced to a minimum, I would say. And then on long term, uh, you will definitely uh, have less costs and increased productivity um, as you do not need to uh, handle data manually uh, or ma manage different systems uh, at the same time. And that all results then in fast implementation um, with our templates and configurations. So just for a summary, I'll go over that one. What we are um, what we are supporting on the one hand side are different um, portals, on the other hand side different formats which are currently available uh, on the market and the different tools which our customers are using and the combination of all that let's say gives you a complete system where you really can rely on and uh, will not have any hassle anymore in, in future. Okay, so if you have any questions so far, you can al already start typing if you like. Um, so I think it's important that we do not forget anything you, you want to know at the end. Um, so in the meantime, I will hand over to, to Christian. For that, I just have to switch here the screen so that you can see his window. Just a second. Yep. So now you should see the login screen of Fargus and Symphony. Very good. So Christian, it's your turn. Thanks, Ralph. Um, just a little bit explanation about where I'm, what I, what I have prepared here. Um, I'm running a GRI 8 version on uh, top of a uh, Docker image. I'm running Symphony, the new Symphony 3.2 version on top of a Docker image. And I'm connected basically, I would just log into Symfony quickly. Um, and I'll show you um, the configuration of the of the components. Um, I have already installed a TIEasy adapter that's going to connect us with, um, with BMW. Um, and I have basically created a connection with, um, with the development environment. So one of the aspects of Symfony is that per adapter and basically also per process, we can have what we call configuration sets. And each, each configuration set um, is just an, an, an alias that we can use um, for the connection later on. So this is called dev environment. And then there's a couple of different, um, there's a couple of different uh, connection parameters behind uh, that. These parameters are pretty much specific to the adapter itself. So if I just continue, I say, let me install the Jira adapter as well. Um, I'll just, uh, I'll just see where is it gone to. Wait a second, where can I find it? Jira, here we go. And I'll install it. Um, in the new 3.2 versions, the adapters are going to be um, are going to be uh, accessible by both by um, old people processes and new Java processes. I have prepared, of course, a new Java process for the TC connection here. And these adapters, they are they are supplied as zip archives. So I just uploaded the zip. And for Jira, we can then also create a connection to my local system. So this is local Jira. Um, and my local 
Jira, and then we'll see a different set of collections. So I'll just put the tabulation SDK, that's 29 Jira. That's the connection, that's the password, that's the user. So we have also configured that. And if you, for example, do have different different uh, Jira, Jira um, instances, or if you basically you have a local Jira and you have a, you have a cloud-based Jira, we can just have two different config sets to work with that. Um, the other ingredient that we need is also here is a uh, process template. And these process templates are basically a collection of I'm stop training. It's the let me see templates. Uh, it's basically a collection of uh, best practices. So it's gonna bring all all the implementation of behaviors like how do we store checksums, how do we know the relations between our Jira tickets and the TZ BMW tickets, stuff like that is already pre-configured so that in the process implementation itself we can we can just focus on, on bringing all pieces together so i have the template installed and then i have prepared a process that is going to download um, all the stuff from tz basically to let me just sort it like this to jira um, i'll install that as well and then the process has a couple of uh, of configuration parameters as well. So we could say this is now our first BMW project. And in that first BMW project, we have to tell the process, okay, we want to speak to the dev environment, to our local JIRA. In case there are new defects, we want to create bugs in the JIRA system. Uh, everything should end up in a project called TZ2 um, in JIRA. And then the last thing we'll have to do is we'll have to um, configure the, the, the data transformation. So there's basically three different cases that we might bump into with this process. It's like new BS1 tickets, that is brand new tickets coming from BMW. And we have existing BS1 tickets that, that are tickets that we already synced. And the third case is, um, existing BS2 tickets that are tickets that we have previously sent to BMW. So for simplicity reason and because we're in the dev environment, I'll just create, I'll say this is TAEZ, TAEZ, and you can see there is kind of little folders that I can create on top of these, these mapping scenarios to organize it. That was the scalability that Ralph spoke about. It's like TZ and then is here maybe Dante for, for timeline, stuff like this. And then I have a, a scenario itself, so I can just that is say um, DMW defect creation. And in these scenarios, I just I just define who talks to whom. It's like TZ dev environment is gonna talk to Jira local. Um, so that basically Symfony knows what uh, what attributes are going to be available, what what stuff we could do for the mapping. So here is the list of the attributes from BMW. We have a title, and here is the list in Jira. Of course, if I know, I want to push it to summary. So title goes to summary is enough for my demonstration, I hope. So I've created that one, and and then I will just took it into into my process. Of course, uh, in reality, um, this is the point where a lot of discussion takes place and there's also a process um, on BMW side that is going to create a contract with you guys on, on what to put in, into these mappings. The last thing I'll have to do is I'll have to go into the schedules. Uh, in simply most of these integrations are, are time-based. So we have a scheduler here, and what I'll do is I'll say this is TR Easy. These are TR Easy schedules, and then we can create a, a concrete scheduler. So this is then let's say that's the uh, BMW test project that goes on. Um, then our scheduler is based on cron, but because I also always forget what the meaning of all these digits are. Um, we have a you have a, uh, a well-built editor here so i can just configure whatever rules i need 
I just select for a process and then I'll select for my configuration. And in case you would have a couple of different projects to synchronize with BMW, of course, we have also different, different schedules here. So then I can finally run it. Uh, so just launch it manually. Um, there is there is also oh it doesn't went through. There is also a reporting um, behind uh, is also a reporting module behind Symphony, which is going to indicate problems to us. Or in that case, I had a problem like with it loading. Oh, I did, guys. I forgot, forgot to save that one here. So that. Let's do the configuration again, TZ, and then we go BMW creation, creation. So the reporting module is going to tell us all the all the underlying problems. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of, I'll just jump into that, we'll kind of keep off track of this process was failing. Okay, that was the reason. Or uh, um, also going to show all the processes that are running. So I'll start the scheduler again. So let's see. And then the process is going to first of all go into um, a phase that we call scoping. So it's going to talk to the BMW server now. It's going to download um, all the data model details to make sure our mappings are valid and stuff like that. And then end of story, it's also going to download all the defect information that has to be synchronized. Um, and once we are we are leaving the scoping phase, um, we will see uh, each of the defects being processed. We call that the execution phase. Um, and typically with the BMW Dev environment, it, it takes a little bit. So as you can also see, we have downloaded 712 items. And then Symfony is just basically beginning to process that. Um, the the advantage of the scoping execute is also like if you run symphony in a fail safe uh, architecture like you basically have a cluster of say at least two symphony instances and and say at the very end at defect 700 one of your instances is cracking symphony with autom automatically uh, reschedule the remaining 12 items to be processed on the other machine so and it's going to go its way and then typically um, create items in Jira. I will leave it running because from time to time we have to sync it anyway. Let's take a look into Jira. This is a Jira 8 instance. And I'll jump into this TZ2 project. And now you can see um, all these items being, being created in here. Um, Dev environment always contains just unique IDs. So that's most of um, most of the the, the basic stuff. Um, maybe maybe just to uh, to wrap up the rest of um, of the stuff with the Symphony 3.2. We have introduced also REST interfaces um, uh, for the server itself, for the server functionality, and also for the adapters. So there's also a possibility that you speak to each of the adapters by by REST calls. Um, that can, those can be issued easily from, from, from the web interface that I'm showing. Um, also, what has been improved in, a, in the 3.2 is like if I go over the list of components, let's say for the TZ adapter itself, uh, we have now included the documentation. So I can jump into the TZ adapter and I'm going to see exactly all the functionality that's relevant if you guys decide to um, also develop your own, your own processes. Here is the source of information of what we can do um, with the adapter. So that's pretty much of what I wanted to to show you today. Um, it's gonna the process is gonna run a little bit. Um, I'll wait until it finishes, um, and I think we can then continue. If there is any questions, I'm more than happy to to answer that. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Um, so I've already seen that there are some questions here but before that um, I want to end up with uh, uh, where do I have it with some uh, with some slides uh, with some additional features we have not talked about just uh, 
two or three slides here. So one, one important thing is that we have also capabilities for clustering uh, and um, for horizontal load balancing, um, like you see here on that picture. So we can place several um, symphony clusters side by side and uh, they will automatically uh, balance the load um, if you have a huge number of projects, for example, or maybe a high volume of, uh, of or, uh, a high density of data exchanges. And at the same time, it gives you the ability to have a fail safe mechanism. So if you have maybe two cluster nodes and one is uh, one is uh, crashing for whatever reason, the other one can automatically take over the complete work from, from the first node. And when the first one recovers, then they will balance the load again automatically. Um, second thing is uh, we can also, as Christian already explained, um, um, uh, uh, transport contextual information and, and attachments, uh, which is very important, of course, uh, especially in the defect management exchange. So that means you can also transfer hierarchies or structures of, of elements. This is more uh, related to tool integration, I would say, but attachments are relevant also for data exchange, of course. Common functions, so we have different tools which have special fields for comments. We can, we can come up with that. And what is very important, if you have a larger organization with projects where you say, okay, they should configure their projects in Symfony by their own. We have a multi-tenancy capability so that we can really split the system in a way that they can make reuse of all the um, adapters and process templates, but can configure them by themselves without being disturbed by other projects or other departments here. This is very, very important for kind of um, building up a sub-administration And uh, yeah, last slide, um, we can, of course, not only process one uh, process at the same time, we can have them uh, run in parallel. Um, they can be triggered um, as seen by a schedule, but also manually or by, by an event trigger from, from the system. Maybe if you have a state change in your integrity or JIRA for a certain item, we can detect that change from get an information from from the server itself and and run such a synchronization process based on that information and with our persistence module we are intelligently linking the data between your system and uh, the customer system so there is no need for you to store the unique ids of the items we are doing that in our persistence and at the same time uh, we are using that persistent, uh, persistence to record also the content of the data exchanges. So that means for future um, synchronizations, we can um, exactly detect if any of the data to be transported has changed. Uh, and if not, we will we will not transport that. So that saves you a lot of a lot of uh, network bandwidth of, and capacity, of, of course. So that's also a very clever implementation. Um, of database here. Okay, so now I will I will now come to your questions. Let's see what we have here. Just make that screen here for us a little bit bigger that we can see it. So first, the first question I will read here. Um, hi, is it possible um, to integrate PTC Integrity 10.9 with uh, Jira? Um, simple answer is yes. <laughs> you, of course, uh, as I said, the system is also capable of uh, performing tool integration, so you can really transport and link and sync data, so to say, between Integrity, whatever version, and Jira, whatever version. So um, I think Integrity, all the 10 plus versions are supported, and Jira, I think we, the, since for we have adapters supporting Jira since version four, and we are always supporting the latest versions of the tools. Um, second question, uh, obviously from a customer, I would say. So uh, process templates uh, we have talking about, are they available only for the Java-based version? Um, so Chris mentioned before, we, we have two types of, let's say, process templates. So one is, more old-fashioned ways using a, a, a language called um, 
people business process execution language this is kind of a graphical modeling language um, we are supporting that with subsequent releases of symphony um, for a longer time uh, definitely but uh, these java templates which we have shown uh, now in the demonstration they are only available for the latest version of symphony 3.2 and um, and of course they're only available for java yes. so that's one of the reasons why we moved away from yeah. from the people strategy <clears throat> is to be able to uh, to to have better ways to architect reuse Exactly. It's also much more easy to maybe to integrate uh, external components, which uh, sometimes are necessary to do some kind of uh, data transformation and whatever. So there's a lot of good reasons to, for us to uh, switch to Java. Um, which is the latest Jira version used for the XML-based version? Um, so I think you mean people. Um, as I said, um, yeah, it's Jira. Um, I don't know eight dot. I don't know what is what is currently available, but it's the latest version, which is currently in the market. I can just quickly look that one up. It's not an issue. Um, Jira, we said. Uh, this is Jira. So that is four oh one. The latest XML-based version is 4.01. The latest Java-based version is 4.47. Oh, but you mean the adapter version? Yeah. yeah. Which is the latest Jira version used? Yeah. I think this is the adapter. Ah, okay. Yeah. Next question that I see is when 3.2 will be available. Um, it's already available since quite some time for the beta. We have we have had um, a very very good feedback from the customer base are in the very latest phase of, um, of of bringing all the bits and pieces together so i was i was initially hoping to release it last week i hope i can do it by this week we will see how well that turns out but as always we are we are trying to reach a certain scope not a certain date but i'm i'm confident we can do it in the next couple couple of days yes so kristen talks about public uh, availability so for customers uh, which are running which are want to have a, a let's say pre-release version of the system they can have access to it so we ourselves yeah weeks. we ourselves also started to use 3.2 since march um, so whenever you need it let us know Okay, so I see we are quite good in time. We still have 10 minutes left from our original schedule. So if you have any any additional questions, just feel free. So as I don't see any more questions. So if uh, you are not a current customer and you need more information or if you are a customer you need more information just contact us i think our customers they have already their connection channel established uh, for new customers just uh, uh, contact us uh, using the, the, the contact data presented here um, the webinar uh, has been recorded so uh, all the participants they will receive um, an email in a, within the next uh, one or two days and uh, business days uh, with um, links to the video and also with download link for the presentation you have seen so everything is uh, captured and will be made available for you so i just can say thank you also in the name of christian uh, for spending the time with us uh, this evening and um, yeah I hope you can enjoy the good weather. Uh, I think we have that throughout Europe, and I see we have we have uh, participants for, from from all over Europe here. Um, and um, yeah, I wish you a good day, and see you next time. Bye bye.